Hi, everyone. Welcome to our session today, Moving Beyond Username and Password, Going Passwordless with Okta. My name is Teju, and I'm on the product marketing team here at Okta. And for today's conversation, we're going to briefly cover the current state of authentication and how passwordless fits into organizations' long-term security plans, as well as some of the passwordless options available in Okta for our customers to use today. So overall, we'll go through an intro again on the current state of authentication, go through some common questions around passwordless and essentially passwordless myth busting to help answer common objections. Uh, then we'll cover designing your own passwordless authentication experience where we'll really dive into the Octa features and we'll end um, on talking about the next steps in your passwordless journey. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started here. Now, for a long time now, we've really lived in this golden era of passwords, uh, but with the title of this session, it's safe to say that it's now in the past. But before we go any further, let's take a look at the brief history of passwords. Now, the first origin of the password really goes back to Roman times when uh, watch words were deployed as a form of identification. And those watch words shared a lot of important characteristics with the modern password, including a secure back channel. Now, this basic concept of the password has evolved through the years. It was used in World War II as a countersign to validate um, each other on the battlefield. And then in the 1960s at MIT is when we really saw the modern version of the password. Uh, the way that it was used is that the university had developed a compatible time sharing system that uh, was used by their researchers. And the thing is that these researchers shared a common mainframe as well as a single disk file. So to keep all of their files private, the concept of this password was developed so that users could only access their own files for their allotted four hours a week. I guess computer time was limited back in the 60s. And then we move into the internet era of passwords where we really are today. Now in the earlier age of passwords, we saw you know, the standard eight character password. Frequently that didn't really differentiate between upper and lower case. But as we started moving into creating tons of online accounts, hundreds of online accounts really per user for various services, we saw the intro of very insecure passwords like the word password. And so websites uh, that, were, that are customer and consumer facing as well as IT teams started doing this, um, you know, creating complexity requirements for passwords, which in theory should have made things more secure but still really easy to circumvent because people were just uh, ma making their password something like password one, two, three. So naturally this golden age of passwords has made us very hackable. Now first common attacks like phishing, man in the middle and password spray have made passwords a primary attack vector, uh, not only a primary attack vector, but really a successful one that hackers are able to easily exploit to uh, uh, initiate account takeover attacks. So we try to address this by requiring super complex requirements for these 16 character passwords with uppercase, lowercase requirements, numbers, um, special characters, which are really hard for users to remember. So this also means that users more frequently need to reset and recover their password. And that eventually leads to the cost of your password resets. Your IT team or support team and help, help desk teams are really inundated with these account management activities when they could be uh, spending time on more impactful tasks. So now let's take a look at the authentication methods we see both in the enterprise and for customer and consumer facing apps. Now we know that passwords are insecure and deliver a poor experience, but realistically they are something that we're all really, really familiar with at this point. So we wanna think about why passwords have been around for so long, even though they are hard to remember, there's no considerations around operating system or device support. Passwords are so ubiquitous that they're just embedded everywhere into any point of authentication, whether it's on the device or logging into an application. Now, to solve the shortcomings of passwords, we came up with second factor authentication. And that's really an additional layer of authentication that's based on something that you know and that you have and that you are. Now, this is more secure for sure, but typically delivers a poor uh, user experience and frequently requires that you have a phone or some additional hardware device as that second factor. 
So as annoying as passwords are, the only reason it's rated a little bit higher on the end user side is because adding a second factor of authentication can really cause more user friction depending on the factor that you choose to use. Now, more recently, we've explored biometric authentication with technologies like Face ID and Touch ID as a strong assurance method and the replacement to a password, better user experience, but something that frequently requires specialized hardware. Now, with all of these pros and cons with current authentication methods, we need to think through what is the ideal authentication experience. So one, it needs to have an ex exceptional end user experience. That's true for both workforce and customer um, and consumer use cases. Uh, it needs to have security protections against phishing and other common identity attacks. It needs to provide admins with the control and visibility to detect when something goes wrong. And of course, it has to be scalable as your organization grows and offer a great TCO so your support team is not inundated again with these password reset tasks. So this is really where we think passwordless authentication can help sol uh, solve some of these challenges and deliver on the promise of a much better user experience. Now, because passwordless is still an early concept, there's definitely some skepticism around its usability and its efficacy. So let's talk through how you can be more confident in your passwordless deployment. And the way that we'll do that is actually by taking a look at some of the survey responses that Google had sent to its uh, employees and customers and partners a couple of years ago around usage of security key as a, a form of a second factor. Now, the first question you'll want to answer is, um, you know, can passwordless really deliver a secure experience? Now, the reason that we hear this question is that for many people, moving to passwordless means moving away from the traditional password and second factor combination to just one factor. But when you think about the definition of multi-factor authentication as two factors from the categories of knowledge, possession, and inheritance, passwordless is actually a combination of possession and inheritance. Now, examples here include face ID on your device. The device is your possession factor. Face ID is your inheritance factor. Therefore, you are satisfying MFA just in a passwordless manner. Or when we think about mobile push notifications with biometrics as a form of passwordless, again, the mobile push and the associated device is the possession factor and the device biometric is the inheritance factor. Now, this slide shows you that we have some early proof around, um, you know, or some early proof around the usefulness of passwordless factors. Now, with the survey that Google did, they found that passwordless authentication using security keys, like a YubiKey, for example, that could have been as a YubiKey with a biometric too in more modern days, um, that's better than all device and knowledge-based factors to stop account takeover incidents. And we'll also talk about why these other factor types like SMS and email are less secure factors in a couple of minutes. Now, the second question that we want to answer is, is passwordless actually cost effective? Now, it is true that going passwordless may require a combination of new device purchases, whether that's new laptops, mobile devices, or biometric card tokens. Now, the same survey also found that when using passwordless authentication, the cost, of you per, the cost per user is actually very low, thereby allowing you to scale without increasing your support costs. Now, this is largely attributed to the fact that less support cases for password resets are opened when other factors are involved. So if you give the, your users the options for a primary and a backup factor, they can initiate their own account recovery. So ultimately, the increase in user productivity and decreased support costs are actually worth that initial hardware spend. And then the third question is around end user experience. Now, the, again, in the same survey, uh, we all, Google also indicated that password list authentication methods were consistently faster to authenticate than any form of authentication, delivering a better end user experience. Okay, so far we've discussed the need to move away from passwords and proof that passwordless authentication provides the best of both worlds in terms of deployability and management, cost and user experience. So now we wanna get into the passwordless options available in Okta and what you'll want to think through as you start deploying passwordless. Now let's dive into uh, the, the uh, major approaches for passwordless within Okta. Um, for both workforce and um, customer and um, 
consumer identity use cases. We'll start with email magic link. Now email magic link is probably familiar to you. Um, the way that it works is that when you're signing up for a service or logging into a service, you have a link sent to your inbox. You click on that link, it jumps back out to the application and you're logged in. So it's very easy for users to, to use. Now this is a great authentication model if you need to provide you know, authentication for an app that doesn't require frequent login. If you need to provide a passwordless authentication from any device, or if you need to bootstrap users into your service before you offer them a higher um, assurance passwordless model. So the end user experience for email magic link is great. Of course, one of the things that you may need to think about is whether or not the user's email inbox itself is actually secure. But if you're willing to accept that risk, especially for consumer use cases, then email magic link is a great way to start going passwordless. And then we have factor sequencing. Now, factor sequencing is a capability in Okta that allows you to combine one or more high assurance factors into the authentication experience. So for example, if a user has already enrolled in phone number for OTP and they use Okta Verify, you can allow users to use either one or both of these factors in the authentication flow without requiring a password. So in the example here, you can see that we're requiring just Okta Verify push. Now, one thing we haven't covered in depth yet is this concept of implicit factors. So things like device, location, and IP that a user has logged in from. And really to deliver the most secure passwordless experience, you'd want to include this type of location context in the passwordless access decision. So for this example, logging in maybe from a known device, uh, we'll allow passwordless, but logging in from a new device might, re might require two factors. Now we move on to WebAuthn, which is a standards-driven passwordless authentication experience. It's truly phishing resistant and can be used to prevent account takeover attacks, man in the middle attacks, or man in the browser attacks. Now WebAuthn uses a token built on your device, like a Touch ID or a FIDO compatible YubiKey to deliver this authentication experience. And because no user credentials are actually shared back with the server, this authentication mechanism offers strong protection against those common identity attacks. And then lastly, we want to talk through Okta FastPass. Now, this is Okta's device-based passwordless solution, and it starts with users registering their device to Okta. Now, after this one-time registration, regardless of where the user is located, they have passwordless access to resources in Okta including signing in through the dashboard, native mobile apps, as well as desktop declines. Now this uh, Okta FastPass works on any device, managed or unmanaged, AD joined, not AD joined, and MDM managed. All of those types of device contexts can be layered on top of the policies for Okta FastPass to deliver that secure passwordless experience. Now, whether you're considering passwordless for the workforce or for customer and consumer facing apps, there's four key areas to plan. First, you wanna understand the nature of the security threats that you have, really by eliminating passwordless, what identity threats can you solve for? Next, you want to understand the technologies in play in your IT environment and in your customer or consumer facing app. You really wanna understand how your users are accessing your service, what devices they use to access the service, and the level of assurance required for your business in the factors that you choose. Then you want to map out the user groups and understand the journey for each user group. How are users registering, authenticating, and recovering their passwordless authentication factor? You also want to map out the, the end user experience and understand how the impact of the technologies that you have um, in place, um, how that'll reduce user friction during authentication. And then finally, you want to map out the cost of deploying each technology. So passwordless options like email magic link are cheaper to deploy and offer a lower level of assurance while using WebAuthn offers a higher level of assurance, but could be more expensive to deploy with new hardware. All right, so, so far we've talked about the current state of authentication, passwordless myth busting, and then also the features that are available in Okta for passwordless along with those considerations. So I wanna wrap up here by talking through the next steps in deploying passwordless. Now in the previous section, we talked about the different options for passwordless in Okta, but 
But it's also important to think through which method of passwordless is applicable to use cases in workforce or customer identity. For example, email magic link doesn't really work well for workforce because your email is typically federated with Okta, which means the user won't be able to access their email until they log in. Uh, and so that really means that email magic link is a better fit for customer identity. Factor sequencing and WebAuthn are great fits for both. And um, it can all be configured through the API if you prefer that for your customer identity use cases. And then lastly, for Okta FastPass, that one is more applicable to workforce because of the need to deploy Okta Verify on devices. That's probably less likely to happen in a consumer uh, use case, but it could also be used for B2B if you have partners that are willing to get Okta Verify deployed across their devices. Now, wrapping things up, we recommend that you think about going past that as you think about going passwordless, you map this out into a journey based on the assurance required, as well as the authentication types required. Now, each passwordless option addressed uh, addresses different use cases across workforce and customer identity, and you may even end up using a combination of many different factor types. Now, ultimately, the goal is really to reduce your dependency on passwords to help limit account takeover and data breach. Now that was a quick overview on passwordless authentication, the current state of authentication and how passwordless can help you move to a more secure authentication model, as well as the different passwordless capabilities available in Okta. Thanks for listening.